Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren. And I'm Laurel and Tyler Thompson. It's great to be with you. Thank you for joining us today on the 700 Club Canada. Mm. Did you know that according to research, there are scientifically supported benefits of love? Mm -hmm. Here's what they found. Love can lower blood pressure, decrease stress, and even boost your immunity. Mm. It's even proven that those in more stable relationships have fewer doctor visits and fewer hospital stays. What I have learned after being married for, and I'm going on 32 years, wow. is that uh, love does make you feel that you are safe. Yes. And it does feel, make you feel that you're also comfortable as well, a comfort right. zone. Right. you just like, yeah. It's wonderful. Well, you know, I've read Not before stressed. that Sure, and even just having hugs. You know, when you're in a marital relationship and mm -hmm. you love someone, there's you, you have hugs, you hold hands, you pat someone on the shoulder, you make yes. food for each other. There's this sense of community. You have, you know, that comfortable environment, and yeah. that's very healthy. Well, it is, and uh, the Dartmouth Medical School did an interesting study mm -hmm. on being hardwired to connect, wow. and they said that uh, when you had connectedness, and it mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you were married, but we're talking about children and also people and yes. you gave your life away to someone else it literally caused your life expectancy to go up wow you know today you'll see how one exotic dancer trapped in addiction learned the truth about love and how it completely changed her life and I'll be back with an inspiring message hopefully about love as part of my faith forward series I'm looking forward to it but first Lakeisha thought love and abuse went hand in hand then everything changed when she was in Introduce to real love. Take a look. Wanting to have hugs and wanting to have kisses and wanting to be tucked in bed at night and all those special things you do, you know, with your parents when you're a child. These are the things Lakeisha Christian missed most after her parents divorced and her father moved out when she was eight. I started really wanting those things and actually kind of craving those things in a way. I was looking for someone to say, you're pretty. I was looking for someone to say, you're amazing. I was looking for those words that made me feel like I, I mattered. Lakeisha grew up and once a teenager, turned to boys and sex for the answer. It was fulfilling and satisfying me for a moment. And if I could just feel this all the time, I'll be okay. They love me. They love me um, and they want me, they need me and I need them. So I became very needy and I started to attach myself to them. It was a void within me where I would actually cry every single night. What is wrong with me? At 17, she got pregnant. She was scared, but kept the baby and moved in with the father. I thought, this means I'm finally going to be happy. I have a baby that loves me. I love this child. And me and the father will make this perfect life together, and I'll be fixed. Everything will be OK. The man became unstable, and Lakeisha left. Her next boyfriend soon became abusive and controlling. And it didn't start off abusive. It started off with him loving me and charming me and buying me gifts and, and loving my child, my firstborn. But Lakeisha stayed, unable to tell the difference between abuse and love. It became love in a way. If he's hitting me, he has to love me. What is it? Is he jealous? Oh, gosh, maybe I did do something to make him feel that way, and he just doesn't want to lose me. The relationship finally ended, but Lakeisha would continue jumping in and out of abusive relationships another 10 years, having three more children along the way. My self-esteem is so low. My confidence is shot. I remember looking in the mirror, what is wrong with you? One day after another brutal beating, Lakeisha took her children to a home daycare run by Pam Fisher. And then when she took the glasses off, there was bruises. At that time, at that time, I'm sorry, that's when you know that she needs the love of Christ more than ever because she had a hard night that night before. She would say, you know Jesus loves you? Do you know God cares for you? Do you know you're special? Do you know you're beautiful? But the words didn't start sinking in until Lakeisha's abuser followed her to Pam's home. He comes in, 
she gets right in the middle of us because she sees fire is breathing from this man. And I told him, no, you're not doing this here. You have to go. I'm thinking, no, he's about to kill this woman and then he's gonna kill me. I saw his fist clench up. She planted her feet and she said, you leave my house now. And he stood there for a moment, but then he backed up and then he went out the door. I think at that moment, I was like, wow, what kind of power did this woman just had? So I'm like, God, it has to be you. I started believing that I was worthy, that I was special, that someone would love me. Lakeisha left her boyfriend and tried to forge a new life, but she still couldn't break the cycle and again ended up with an abusive man. He took it to another level when he put a gun to her head and threatened to kill her and himself. I really think God had put his arms around me at that time. I said to him, God, I need you to help me. I, I need you to help me because I'm scared. A knock on the door. And it was our landlord. And he said, I need you guys out. We think that there is a gas line somewhere leaking. Finally, Lakeisha had the courage to take her children and leave. I remember that night thanking God, you saved me. As much as I've been unfaithful to you, and you're still standing there with your arms wide open. In the coming days and weeks, Lakeisha began to understand what Pam had been saying about God's love for her. You love me, me, all this ugly stuff in me with these men and that men and fornicating and children out of wedlock. You still love me and I couldn't believe it. I could not believe that he still was there for me. And I remember telling him, God, just use me, forgive me, forgive the sins that I've committed, God, save me. Lakeisha started living her life for Christ and now sees someone very different in the mirror. I see God through me today. I see his image in me today. Along with her husband, Antonio, Lakeisha is raising her five children. She also helps victims of abuse through a nonprofit called Free. Like Pam, she tells them in God's eyes, they're special and worthy of his love. And I'm telling you, it is so much love to someone who thought she didn't deserve anything, to someone who thought that I won't be anybody. I'm not gonna be anything. He did all of that for me. Laura Lynn, that was such a powerful testimony. Yes. And Lakeisha said something that was really, and it stuck out to me. She said, what's wrong with me? Because she kept going into this cycle over yes. and over. And what I found is what she was struggling with was fear. And uh, you might be dealing with this crippling fear as well right now. I want you to get this in your mind. Fear is false evidence appearing real. When Pam stood up, and she stood up to that, that, that young man, even though his fence, fists were clenched, she knew at that moment that there was something that was bigger than her. If you need that, call the number on the screen, 1-855-759-0700. It's yours for the asking. Hmm. You know, I was amazed. I mean, she had been through so many things that had yeah. stolen the love from her life, you know, yes. that we were talking about earlier. And do you remember uh, when Jesus met the woman at the well? This was clearly a woman with a tremendous history. Yes. Uh, five previous husbands, and the man that she currently was with was not her husband. And somehow, Jesus knew it all. And yet, he chose to talk to this woman who probably had a bad reputation, who, you know, it wasn't typical that a man should be speaking to a woman at the well like that. But Jesus did. Jesus always talks to the Amen. most unlovely and loves us. What I love about the woman at the well, just like Lakeisha, yeah. what we've got to do is some of us have not thanked God for the things we left behind. She left her water pot. And when she left the water pot, ah. that meant that she was not going back to that. That fear can be broken today, but you got to leave it behind. I love it. Well, mm. after the break, Mindy found freedom from a life of drugs and exotic dancing. Mm, stay with us. So good.
a time long remembered, the night six-year-old Mindy Crane's father took her from the only person she felt loved her. All night long, I cried for my grandmother, and it was pretty traumatic for me because I, I felt like she was my mom. Four years had passed since Mindy and her two sisters moved in with their grandmother after their real mother walked out. Now that her dad remarried, they would be living with him, his new wife, and her three children. Neither her dad nor stepmother had time for Mindy. I just, I was feeling a, a very rejected and, and abandoned growing up and being in that family. I just wanted to be loved unconditionally. I wanted somebody to, that, to really love me and spend time with me. And I wanted times to be with my dad. She was also suffering from depression. I had a lack of identity. Um, I felt like my mom didn't want me. I felt like I really didn't fit in with my family. My dad was never there. I just felt worthless. I felt like I didn't have any worth. I felt like I um, just wasn't good enough. At 11 years old, she took some pills she found in the medicine cabinet in the first of many failed suicide attempts. I really wanted to die. I didn't really know what the pills were gonna do to me, to be honest with you. And I had to take as many of them as I thought I needed to, to die. At one point, she was prescribed medication, but it didn't help. As a teenager, she turned to drugs and alcohol. I didn't care anymore, really. I felt like I was numbing myself from all the pain and all the, the hurt. I started rebelling. I started trying to find my, my value and my self-worth and uh, the attention of men. I was getting attention that I thought that I wanted. Wanting to escape her home life, Mindy got a fast food job at 16. She was working when someone she knew told her that being a stripper could be her ticket out. She pulls up in her red convertible Corvette. She says, how would you like to go from making $4.90 an hour to $490 a day? Man, that would be awesome. She ran away from home, dropped out of school, and used a fake ID to get a job dancing at a club. She had money and independence from her parents, but it came at a cost, her dignity. There were times when I, I would feel like, man, this, this isn't right, but if I do just enough drugs and alcohol, I could kind of drown out my conscience so that I could do it, and it becomes the norm for you. Pregnant at 17, Minty gave up drugs and dancing temporarily. But as a single mom, she felt stripping was her only option. I needed a job where I could pay somebody to watch my, my child and be able to spend as much time with my kid as, as I could and be able to afford to take him to go do things. And that was, that was a trap for me. In her 20s, she met and married Lance, and they had two daughters. Again, she felt the money she made stripping provided the home life she'd always desired. Family was a real big thing with me. So I wanted to make my own family be the, the type of family that I never had. Even then, she couldn't escape the overpowering sense of shame or the drugs she used to cover it. Then a friend started telling Mindy about God and invited her to a church small group. Mindy saw hope but believed she had to fix herself for God to accept her. And I just felt like, you know, eventually I'll grow out of this stuff. Eventually I'll be religious. He'll be happy with me. And so that's what it looked like for me to have a relationship with God. If I just could be good enough, he would accept me. But she continued doing drugs and dancing. One night while partying at a friend's house, Mindy overdosed and felt like she was dying. I remember laying there and I felt my spirit just being ripped away from my body and I realized I wasn't even in my body anymore. At first, Mindy feared she was about to face God's judgment. Instead, she felt overwhelmed by his love. I just remember just feeling that love it was so amazing that I, I just, I would have left everything. So Mindy quit her job and for the next two years tried to get her life straight to be acceptable to God. Then at a special church service, she finally heard that God wanted her just as she was. 
Me and my son that night, we walked up there and I could just, I started weeping, I started crying. I knew that if God could save me, that it would be in my best interest to, to surrender my life to him. And that's, that's what I did that night. Mindy stopped using drugs and alcohol and started growing in her relationship with Jesus. So I started getting so excited because I already started changing and that shame started going away. The more I started seeing Jesus, the more that I started liking who I am. I no longer started looking to other things to validate me, to the world to define me, the approval of the world, or rather my parents approved of me or they didn't because I knew that God did. His love completely transformed me. Soon after, her husband Lance accepted Christ as well. Today, Mindy returns often to the streets of New Orleans, not to work, but to share the love of God. She knows firsthand how that love changed her. When Jesus steps in, it's almost like the people that looked at you and thought you were one way and they see you, it's like they, they have a respect for the new creation. I don't have to sit there and earn it and have to prove myself to them. They know that it's, it's genuine, they can feel it. So I, I don't have to explain myself. They're just like, wow, I know Jesus is real. You know, I hear that so many times that uh, what Mindy said is she said she, she wanted to die. She was in depression. And uh, from $4.90 an hour to $490 a night, um, it really caused her to go after the adult entertainment world with full gusto. But you know, Mindy now is a different person. And 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, they're a new creature. Old things pass away. All things become new. And she's new, and that new creation, she says, on the streets of New Orleans is what people see when she goes out. I believe that God can do that new thing inside of your life right now while you're sitting in your home listening to this. If you will today decide that I am going to just completely quit digging myself in this hole. You know, when you're digging yourself in a hole, the best thing to do is just stop digging and then ask for the solution, ask for help. It's no, it, there's no judgment, there's no, there's no shame in that. I've had to do that, and everyone else who has come to Christ has had to do that. So today, I want to get something into your hands. It's a new day. If you stop digging and allow him to pull you out with this prayer, call the number on the screen. It's yours absolutely free. I believe that God can do a new thing inside of you like he did with Mindy. Let's do some business with God. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? He's not concerned about your words. He's concerned about your heart. Jesus, I surrender. I confess my sin. Lord, please come into my heart. Change me. Change me. Make me the person you want me to be. Today I'm yours in Jesus' name. Amen. It's that simple. Now call the number on the screen, 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. Well, one of my favorite parts of the program, Laura Lynn has a powerful message on love during her faith forward. Don't go away. The man I've been working with was on his knees above my body, but on each side of him was a huge angel. He seemed to just emerge through the door and floated out on, on the ground. She started pointing and she was saying monster. Discover the truth in Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Angels, Their Power, Purpose, and Presence. These magnificent beings have awesome power beyond our comprehension. In this DVD, you'll gain biblical insight into these mysterious creatures. Learn their purpose in God's kingdom and their role in your life. Plus, meet people who've had real encounters with angels. God sent an angel to pull Lisa out of that car. Call now to get your copy of Angels. Available now. 
I want to talk to you today about having complete trust in God for your desperate situation. I love the posture and the position that Ruth took in the Bible as she found herself widowed and in a new land with her mother-in-law. These were anxious times for Ruth and she was grieving the terrible loss of her husband and she knew that she needed someone to love her and to embrace her. Ruth was also a Moabite and they did not have a good reputation because their people had derived from an incestuous relationship. She knew that she could face rejection and an abandoned life. And at this time, she knew that she needed to work and to eat. So in Ruth chapter 2, she said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. You see, Ruth was willing to take the leftovers. She didn't feel that she deserved special treatment. She had a humble spirit. You may know the story of how Boaz, well, he saw her in that field as she went about doing what her hands found to do. Boaz is a picture to us of how Jesus has redeemed us from terrible times as lost and disreputable people. Boaz instructed his workers to let some handfuls of grain fall for her on purpose. And he told them, don't rebuke her. You see, because of her attitude, God ensured that there was deliberate provision, grain left on purpose for her use and for her sustenance. Ruth found out that Boaz was a kinsman, meaning that he would be able to embrace her as his wife. She then humbled herself so profusely as to go and lie at the feet of Boaz, becoming vulnerable to his rejection. Have you ever needed to just lie at the feet of Jesus and receive his redemption for all that has happened? Her attitude determined and invoked the favor of God over her life. Boaz said to her, the Lord recompense you for what you have done because he knew that she had left her own people to follow God in a new land. And Boaz says, a full reward will be given to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Boaz did not rebuke her for her past heritage as a product of sin, but rather he acknowledged what she had done by faith in coming to rest under the wings of Jehovah. Boaz redeemed her and he married her and she became engrafted into the direct lineage of the birth of Jesus. What an incredible destiny was given to a stranger, a woman from a questionable background who in faith gave up everything to become part of a new family. Today, God sees your situation, your difficulty, your history, and your heart. He's already paid the price to redeem you, to purchase your life back from an enemy who has tried to destroy you. He has not rejected you. He will never abandon you, and he will honor your walk of faith today by covering you with his wings of grace. If you have been through some hardships, you can trust that Jesus is your redeemer, and he loves you, and there is hope for your future. Kids, we want them to grow up knowing God's Word. But in today's busy world, sometimes we could use some help. The free Superbook Kids Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, right, follow me. discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Welcome back. Did you know the suicide rate in Nunavut is 10 times the national average? That's staggering. And that's why the Arctic Hope Project is so important, and we're honored to partner with them. Mm. Arctic Hope is a faith-based project that addresses many of the root issues that Inuit youth face in none of it. Call the number on the screen, 1-855-759-0700, and consider joining with us today. This is dear to my heart yes. that we would support this, Brian, because I lived in Tuktoyaktuk, you know, up, up in the north, and yes. uh, it truly, truly uh, does have have some some issues that are being addressed and it's a beautiful beautiful thing and when you call for just twenty dollars a month we will send you as our thank you this DVD called angels mm. their purpose their power and really why God put these supernatural beings here for us mm. but it's our gift to you for you when you take the next step and be a part of our team Laura Lynn I traveled to Nunavut enough times yes. and uh, I've seen firsthand and we do a lot of work mm. in Nunavut with yes. uh, uh, 
those that are, are, are battling addiction, yep. those that have been struggling with suicide, and, yes. and the power of God is so strong. Mm -hmm. I want to say a big shout out to all of those that are there, mm -hmm. and Nunavut, and, uh, and Grandma Louie. And Mavis Louis. Jacobson. Yeah, who? My friends, Mavis, Bertha. Yes, and yeah. Grandma Louie, and also Billy Arnicu, and all of those that are wow. up there, as well as Bill Prankard, and uh, we just want to thank mm. Arctic Hope for the work that they're doing up there. It's such a powerful work, and we need them to continue that. Mm. And uh, we got a praise report as well. It came from Leslie Ann. She's from Windsor, and she said, thank you for your prayers for my daughter, Abby, and the birth of her second child, Colum. And all went well and no complications. Praise be to God. Isn't wow. that good? Psh, wow. I appreciate that. Well, you don't want to have complications. You no, know, you this don't. is a, a very precarious time. And so. Yeah, it's a, it's a time when, when most people are, are looking at such budding hopes. And, uh, you know, Laura Lynn, when I went back to pulpit ministry, uh, I started off and there were only maybe a group of elderly people. Yeah. And I started praying this very, very verse. It was, it was, uh, uh, Job 14.7, there's hope for a tree if it is cut down at the scent of water it shall bud again. And out of that, over 45 babies were born. So wow. we're going to be praying right now in the context of holy matrimony that God would allow you if you've been battling in this area of infertility. And I just believe that God is going to do a work with you right now. Mm. Let's, let's agree. Amen. Father, again, there is hope. And uh, no matter what's gone on today, that person is saying, I want a child so badly in the context of holy matrimony. And we're asking you for the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to come now and open the womb. And we cause the fruit of the womb to come forth now. And we yeah. celebrate, Lord, that gift and that world changer that is coming out right now right. in Jesus' name. Even as you did with Sarah and yes. Hannah and Rachel and others whose wombs you miraculously opened, we pray for this abundance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We touch and agree. Amen. <laughs> you know, so we uh, have a power verse. We want to leave this with you. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Yeah. First John 4, 7, and 8. Until next time. God bless. God bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.